So you find me on Elson's Lake on the Stanick Lakes complex with my mate Brad Wegner and we're here for 48 hours fishing to see if we can winkle out one of these ancient carp. I'm going to fish on Elson's Lake in a swim that's tucked up in the corner. We've been seeing a few bubbling, a few fish in the edge as well. And Brad's set up on his Syndicate Lake Roman which is next door and got a few bigger fish in it. So I'm hoping we're going to have a few carp to show you. The weather looks pretty pucker, it's nice and drab, it's about 22 degrees and it's been blisteringly hot the last few weeks. So the weather really has changed. We've seen fish in the edge, seeing bubblers, hopefully we're going to catch something. So we've just done a lap of Elson's with Brad and I'm standing in the original swim that I'm going to be fishing tonight. It's about midday now, not feeling like I'd get a bite at the moment. Obviously I may do, but I can't help it. I've just walked past Mallard and I've seen a few fish on the top. And so uh, I've begged Brad to have a little go. And we're going to have a little go on the surface, bait a few spots in the edge, see if we can get off the mark nice and early. Then I'm going to come back to Elson's this evening and uh, start fishing properly. So we're going to head over to Mallard now, see if we can winkle one out. Right, there's a few spots up there, like in amongst all them trees that nobody fishes. Right. All overgrown, and there's loads of little, like, nooks and crannies where you can put a few ampoules and pellet. I'm fishing in the edge. Yeah, no. yeah. Fair enough. Do you want them off the top, though, Brad? Yeah, I <laughs> He is happy, he is eating flat. Here we go. Oh, he, he wants it, he wants that flutter. If he's under it, he's going to have that flutter. Here's one going. Oh, look, feline, straight for it. Yeah, yeah? got him that time, yep. Yeah. Well, it took a while, but eventually one nabbed the floater. We kind of learnt that feeding less floaters was the one. Um, they haven't really been overly competing with them. So we've just been putting sort of eight or nine out at a time and uh, yeah, managed to hook one that way. There's a lot of weed here, which is slightly concerning. Oh, it looks quite thick, doesn't it, Brad, that? Very 
try and respawn out. Hey! <laughs> well done, mate. Good to go, sir. Touch. Well, it's always nice to get off the mark nice and early. Managed to winkle this one on the, off the surface after uh, half an hour or so. And in typical Brad fashion, as you can see just over my shoulder, he's firing mixers out. He's nicked my rod and he's gonna have a go as well. In the meantime, I'm gonna slip this one back and then go and tie some rigs up ready for Elson's tonight. What a great start. Solid, man. Oh, no! It's a mirror, slate grey. been a frustrating afternoon unfortunately losing a couple on the floaters but we've came back into James's swim now and he's going to get the rods out for the night on some likely looking areas I've still put a few more floaters out just behind us because the lake backs onto Elson's as well so fingers crossed I can try and snare one just before I have to get my rods out for the night luckily I know all the zones and everything ready so it won't take long to put them out but for now we're gonna get his rods out and see if we can snare him his Elson's cap.
and it's time to relax. All the carnage has now subsided. Brad stopped float fishing and I've stopped float fishing as well for the day. Um, we did pretty well to hook a few. I managed to land one, which was nice. Um, but now it's relaxed time. All three rods are out on the main lake on Elson's. Um, and they're both, well, all three of them even, are fishing over to the far bank. One's fishing next to some lilies, the other two are next to some snags, onto some, um, some real hard known spots that Brad knows well. Um, he's kindly put me onto them. I'm fishing nice and simple. They love the tuna in here, so I've crumbed up loads of tuna, some pellets, and some bits of tiger nut as well. Um, I've kept the rigs nice and simple, fluorocarbon all the way through, because it's quite a clear lake. Um, and then I'm fishing some whittled down wafters just to balance the hook out. Fishing rock hard on the bottom, no need for pop-ups or anything. Um, and they're quite sort of wary fish as well, so that should sort that out. So yeah, really looking forward to, um, to what the night will bring, really. We're gonna have a barbecue, um, watch a bit of the football, and enjoy the evening. Hopefully, one of these old ancient Elson's, uh, Elson's carp will make an appearance. Right, so James has just finished setting up behind me. He's probably 20 yards around the corner, so we're going to have a nice social tonight, have a barbecue in a bit as well. It's been a really frustrating day on Mallard, trying to catch them off the top and constantly moving on to the fish and trying to get them going, but they just weren't having it. And after losing a couple as well, it tend to spook most of the fish that were out there, to be honest. I've got three rigs ready to put out into Roman tonight. I've actually just seen a fish as well, just down to my left, so it's looking very promising. So I'm going to get these out onto the spots, put a bit of bait over it, and then we're going to have a barbecue and enjoy the night. I'm about to put on my second rod now and I'm just going to place it into this left hand margin. The wind's been ever so slightly trickling in there but it's not smashing in, it's sort of like on the wind but off the wind and I've seen a couple of fish in here already today and there's been a fair bit of fizzing so I'm just going to flick it out now and then put a little bit of bait around it. Down with a nice fud. So it's just starting to get dark and both Brad and I are full of anticipation because we've both seen fish over, uh, well he's seen one over his rod and I've seen probably three or four shows in the last sort of hour, hour and a half or so. Um, that was whilst watching France and Belgium and France have gone through so uh, hopefully England are going to get a result tomorrow. But anyway back to the fishing, we've seen some fish, the wind's trickling into this bay and uh, it's looking good. So. Hopefully, just hopefully, by morning, one of us will have something to show you. Fingers crossed. I'm not out of the gate, I'm gonna be in here, so. Alex has just come legging it over. Do Sparko. <laughs> it's really early in the morning still, and uh, this is actually my third bite of the morning. Um, I've got one waiting for its picture to be taken. I've just lost one as well in the past sort of 10 minutes or so. Unfortunately, cut me off as soon as I picked the rod up. 
And then this one, the left hand rod's just ripped off. Incredible, powerful take, or incredibly powerful take even. And uh, yeah, I'm attached to uh, hopefully something decent. I'm gonna concentrate on getting this one in now because it's feeling good. Oh, you. Well, gutted isn't the word. That's my second loss of the morning. The fish looked like it was pretty much ready for netting. I was just about to bring it over the top of the lilies. And uh, as you have seen, the hook just pulled out at the last minute. Absolutely burnt to a singe. Um, so I've got no rods in the water at the moment. Just tying up three fresh new rigs. It looks good though, man. It's, um, it's not bright at all. It's real drab, sort of carpy morning. And uh, the mist's just riding off the water now. And uh, I've got to get these rods back out because um, I think I've got another chance. Hopefully, the next bite you see, I'll get it in. Well, it's been a slow first night for me, nothing to report unfortunately, but I've just walked down to my right probably 50 yards and there's a lot of murky water out in front of here where they're obviously churning it up, so possibly contemplating a move, depending on where the fish end up a little bit later today, but I think I need to sit it out for the morning in the swim that I'm in anyway, because I did see fish there yesterday. But a bit of good news, James has had a morning result, so we're going to head over to his swim now and see what he's got to show us. So I was just on my way around to James to have a look at his fish and my receiver let out a couple of beeps and I'm only fishing in close with a really slack line and I knew something weren't quite right. Started running towards the rod and then it's just pulled up tight, picked the rod up and just felt a bit weird, like felt like a tench or something. But um, no, <laughs> it definitely weren't a tench because it woke up after that and we've got a very, very nice common in the net. So I'm absolutely made up but I'm going to get this into a sling quickly, let it have a breather, and then we'll go and sort James's fish out first. Well, this was the uh, early morning wake up call. Definite 20 pounder. We reckon about 22, 23, something like that, yeah, don't we, mate? It's so. a so really angry mirror, so I'm not going to hold him up for very long. But uh, put up an epic scrap. Couldn't resist the tuna as normal. And uh, hopefully, it's one of a few more. Going to slip her back. It's looking really good for another bite today, so going to slip her back and hopefully we'll catch another one. Well, 
Right then, here we go. You saw me place that rod last night down the left hand margin. It's just pulled up tight this morning and we're left with this lovely 27 pound common. Caught on a tuna wafter with a bit of probably half a kilo of pellet and some chopped boilies and some 10 millers over the top. So yeah, well chuffed to get off the mark. So let's see if we can try and winkle another one out today and yeah, enjoy the footy later. So mate, been a cracking morning so far. It has, yeah, very productive. It's been carnage, absolute carnage. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know mate, it's, um, so we're getting on for about... About 12 o'clock now, isn't it? Yeah, just it's, before, yeah. Seems to have slowed down a little bit now. It as... has, but I honestly think it's worth just sitting it out today because it's, it always does bites during the daylight hours and it's like a lot slower at night, so I think it's just worth sitting on your hands, mate, to be honest. Yeah. No point in walking about, having a look and I don't think mooch. so. Like, I've been back to the car this morning and that of Ren seems pretty dire of fish to be honest and there's a lot of fizzing going on out yeah, here, isn't is. that, so. Yeah, okay mate, so we'll sit on our hands for the minute then yeah, and um, just look forward to the football later on. Yeah, fingers crossed for a win. Hopefully mate, yeah. <laughs> Well, I've just got to get the waders straight on because I've just had a take, an absolute rip up, oh, and it's kiting right down there. behind them. Is she going to ping out, do you reckon? It's just at the back of the lilies, isn't it? It's quite a long fish, isn't it? Got her? Yes, Bradders. Yes, Brad. <laughs> What a result! Good skills, son. <laughs> Good days. Well, we thought there could be a chance of, uh, of an afternoon bite, and that's what's just happened. The right hand rod ripped off. Both Brad and I were just having a cup of tea, and uh, I had a single bleep on the right hand rod. We both sort of looked at each other, thought, oh, is that a liner? And a couple of minutes later, it absolutely melted. And this is the result. Another 20 pounder. Love the tuna. They are absolutely on it out there and I can't wait to get the rod back out because I've got a feeling there could be another chance. I've always been a fan of margin fishing and real intimate close-in stuff, so I think Elson's is absolutely perfect because there's so many overhangs, snags, big weed beds and lily pads. It's just perfect for fishing in the edge and observing and feed. You learn so much so quickly. It's only small in size, probably five, six acres, roughly around about 100, 120 fish. Some mega, mega history water for the Nem Valley back in the sort of 70s, 80s was when it first sort of came to the limelight, so to speak. And yeah, it's just wicked, wicked for fishing in the edge. Okay, so the biggest highlight in my fishing was probably the capture of the Robin Common. I was getting so many repeats at the time because I'd, I'd been on it for probably two years now and I had a break from the lake and then I decided to come back after getting a fresh head about a month away 
and I remember fishing a new zone, one that I'd never fished before, and there was a lovely little polished area, probably half the size of a ground sheet, and I managed to lower a rig in there by hand, and then three o'clock in the morning, it's just sort of rods slammed into the storm pole that I was using as a snag here. Like, you heard the noise over the sound of the alarm and massive commotion on the surface, and huge battle, probably 30, 40 minutes after weeding me up in like every single weed bed in front of me. And yeah, when it went in the net, I was like, that's the one that I really wanted, mega fish. Well, the main thing where everyone seems to go wrong is they just turn up and everyone I see fishes out in open water. There's only a small fraction that actually take the time, have a walk around with a pair of Polaroids, find some spots in the edge and stuff like that. Because this is historical margin water, it's always been a margin water, so walking around, looking for a spot on the edge, priming it with a little bit of bait, and just keeping an eye on it, because there's always an opportunity to be out in the edge. So I think, yeah, fishing in the edge is probably the best bit of advice I could ever give anyone on it. So we're desperately trying to get the last rod out in between extra time in the footy. Hopefully it's going to be a result that um, we're going to be smiling with at the end, mate. But just reflecting on today, we've had a bit of a mental day, really. Um, it was utter carnage this morning, landed three or four fish. Yeah. We actually missed one of the stockies that I landed. It was about four pounds, so not the most um, notable capture in the world, but nice all the same. And Bradders, you did all right, didn't you, mate? Yeah, I managed to sneak off just to have a little go myself because you're up on the other end of the lake trying to get them going on floaters but they just didn't seem to be having no. it and I thought there's got to be an opportunity somewhere so found a nice big weed bed and there was fish just lifting up the weed in amongst it just sucking it like all the naturals and stuff in it so managed to just drop a little bit of bread in there and yeah that was the end of that game yeah. over result how big was it didn't weigh it mate probably 23 to 25 pounds. Was it? Nice old character though, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, proper character fish, definitely. Oh, yeah. good man. So get on the Hovis. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> right, we better get back to the football. I'm going to get this rod out. You can probably hear it in the background and uh, hopefully it's coming home. <laughs> <laughs> Well then, left hand rods pulled up tight again this morning. It weren't looking great to be honest. There was a lot of fish sort of down near enough the opposite end of the lake last night, but I thought we were just going to have a social and watch the footy, just enjoy ourselves. But this morning, this one's pulled up tight and yeah, we're playing another really angry Roman carp. So fingers crossed we can get it in the net.
Well, I nicked the fish and I've got the rod back out on the spot. Put a little bit of bait out again. Not a lot, just literally a couple of handfuls. Um, gonna go and wake James up now if he's not already up and see what we've got in the net. Well, we're going to keep this short and snappy because this mirror is absolutely wild. I believe it's your third of the session? Yes, mate, yeah. Good man. You lost one in the night as well. Yeah, unfortunately I had a hook pull, but this one made up for it this morning. Top man. Well, it's been very, very quiet in my swim. And if you don't see from us again, this will be the last fish of the session. I'd like to thank Phil at Stanick Lakes for his hospitality. It's been fantastic. And thank you to Brad for joining us. Yeah, it's been a good trip, mate. I've enjoyed myself. Good man.